Ninth degree aerial perspective. What's happening? How you doing? Dawson Boyle, how you doing? UK, right? If I'm not mistaken. Juan, what's going on, brother? How you doing? Philly in the house. Nino PR216, what's going on? Oh, PA, okay, I got you. Joe Max, say how's it going? Just trying to let some guys get in, man. Newfoundland, Canada, Canada. Peter Mercer, is that Mercer? How you doing, Peter? Texas Blue Rock, say how's it going? Looks like we got 13 people on right now. Somebody's got a good chance of giving one of these. I got four of these guys. I got four of these. They finally came in. Gonna give them one away a week. No rules. Just gonna pick somebody. It's been a long day, brother. Long day, Juan. Two days of training, and the whole time I've been training, he was calling from the job about everything falling apart while I wasn't there. So, yeah. Got home. I almost forgot that I was gonna do a giveaway. But I thought I'd do it. Fort Lewis, what's going on? John Wesley, how's it going? Marcus Wallace, how's it going? Mitch, thanks for following. Mitch Wolfram. Which Phantom you got, Peter? Phantom 3? I don't know, man. People probably sign in and they, they log off. I got 11 people on that line right now. Marv, what's going on? Yeah, Dawson, I didn't even think it would be this big, man. i just been trying to, and I do it as a hobby. And um, Oh, you got a Phantom 3 professional. So, I mean, it's great to kind of get the feedback that I've been getting from you guys about, you know, the channel. I just try to give you stuff that I haven't seen before. Greg Safran, how you doing? <clears throat> or Sarfin, sorry. Yeah, I, mean, I just try to do... The, the hardest thing about being a content creator for me is I'm trying to do original stuff, so... You got... Dawson, you got to give it time, brother. I, I got I, I to admit, I was impatient. I thought I would, be, you know, make videos and people like them. I mean, you just got to wait. It's called organic growth. Wayne Yediman, how you doing? Um... So all you new guys that just kind of joined and, and, and all the guys that's been following me, I don't know if you know, but for me, I've been trying to create um, original content. So when stuff like the um, Spark comes out or the Mavic comes out, I'm not trying to do the same thing everybody else is doing. I think that doesn't show originality. Um, one of my favorite uh, YouTubers is Casey Neistat, and I, and I noticed after watching him and just seeing so many other guys try to copy everything he does. I need to start my computer to fix it, start cranking out some videos. Yeah, I got to get a computer upgraded too. So I'm not trying to be Casey Neistat. I'm not trying to be, you know, any of these other guys. I'm just trying to be me. And I'm trying to give you information that hasn't come out yet or haven't been, you know, that you don't know about. I'm trying to be original. It's kind of hard to do when everybody's thinking of the same ideas. So my, um, Peter, my, my editing software does green screen. Um, and all I have to do is sit in front of a green screen and then select a uh, chroma key. And it'll impose whatever I want on the green screen. John Wesley, thank you. Taking a bath and what's going on, man? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta like make it. You're right, taking a bath and you gotta make you. You gotta make this like fun because if you in it for views or in it for money, it ain't no money in YouTube. I mean, I've been doing this for a while. I mean, oh no, sorry, there is money in YouTube, but if you don't do it for the love of it, you, you're gonna be get bored. And if you can't take um, a, a, na a negative comment or constructive criticism, it's not gonna be good for you. You're just gonna be miserable all the time. Uh, what editing program do you use? I use Mojave. I use um, VSCD, and I use uh, right now I'm using Premiere Elements 15. I don't think I don't know if I can chroma key with Premiere Elements, but I got like five different softwares to do what I needed to do.
Oh, you lose your you. Oh, you lose. Check your cables, man. I don't know. Maybe one of your cables is going bad, or one of your flex cables is is losing its uh connectivity or connection. Greg Saffron, I got started in November of last year. I was bouncing around trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I was doing family videos. I was doing trying to do comedy videos. I was trying to do uh, tech review videos um, off of what I had. Like I, I just I'm a Amazon shopper, so I just keep buying stuff, and, and I figure I'm gonna keep buying and shopping. Um, the, the page started trying to tell you guys like how to buy a nice video camera without buying uh, a GoPro. Um, True Carney's videos are commercialized. Casey's videos. <clears throat> oh, Casey, yeah, Casey's too big now. He's 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 way up there, man. I'm you know, but I like the way he does it, and I like every now and then he gives you information on how to how to how to grow your channel, how to like the last video that I watched of his, and I've missed the last couple, but he was saying if you want to create good content, don't try to be him, don't try to be anybody else. Don't try to make it all about how you fly your drone, you know, just put up good content. And he said, I don't have to, even though I have like some of the most expensive gear that I can get my hands on, he said, it ain't about the gear either. It's about the content. People are tuning in to see what you, what you, what you say, not how good of a camera you have. Right now I'm freaking vlogging with my cell phone. Prime now is awesome. Who's Prime now? How long have we been on here so far? Seven minutes? I thought I'd give it like ten minutes to see how many people can get on before I pick one of you guys and give this thing away. Like I said, I'm going to be giving away your ninth degree. I don't know. I don't know if he's um, still under investigation, but um, I saw one of his more recent videos and he was flying. Oh, Amazon Prime now. I got that. I'm not liking Hulu anymore. Hulu's got like no freaking... I mean, it changed its, it changed its, uh, at least on my Xbox, it's changed its, uh, its user interface. It looks stupid. Yep. Amazon Prime, baby. Anybody get, anybody got an Amazon Prime, uh, uh, credit card? They send you that, that cool, uh, stain, it's not stainless steel, but it's a metal credit card. It's about a three millimeter stick. Looks like you can cut somebody with it. Mitch Wolfman, you got a Mavic Pro down in Puerto Rico. I'm coming to Puerto Rico soon, man. You gotta, we probably gotta uh, get in uh, one of these chat things so I can know where to come when I come to Puerto Rico. Spark gimbal is touchy. I don't know. I'm wondering if anybody's gonna make a, a gimbal lock for the Spark. How long have I had the Mavic? I've had the Mavic for about. Um, hmm. I ordered it. Almost release day. It took me six months to get it, and I had it since then. Paulie Lie. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I have not flown um, any of these at night. Um, I suck at night video. I got to get out and kind of play with the play with the shutter and play with the. ISO and try to get some very clear night video. I'm actually going to try it. Um, I live in Delaware. We got a riverfront area that's got a lot of city lighting in the background when it's dark outside. So it's a pretty nice looking picture. If you if, When I try my uh, night video, I want to go out there and see if I can capture it. A lot of buildings in the background. Reflection off the water. Man, everybody's gone now. I got seven people on. And I'm going to pick a name at, at, in freaking 30 seconds. 30 seconds, I'm picking a name. 30 seconds, I'm going to scroll through this thing and pick a name. I got Gareth, 5,000. What's going on, brother? Oh, you're going to Puerto Rico. I'm in uh, Newcastle, Delaware, Newark. Um... Lino PR. No entry, man. Psycho Gamer, no entry. I'm just good. Oh, 10 minutes. Here we go. I'm going to scroll up and down on the screen, and then when it stops, I'm going to pick the first name I see. You guys can't see this, but I'm actually doing this with my thumb. I'm going all the way to the top. I'm going to let it scroll real fast. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Boom. Wayne Yediman. You still on yet, Wayne? Wayne Yediman, if you're here, type you're here. 
Wayne here. Let me see. I gotta scroll it back to the bottom. If Wayne ain't here, we're gonna pick another person. Hold on, let's go. All the way to the bottom. Wayne, you here? I don't see him. I don't hold on. Oh, Wayne Yellow Man, 946. You're the winner, brother. Send me your information in my inbox and I will send you the drone. You're the winner of the first giveaway of the Fury B F36. For all you other guys, don't worry. I've got four more. No, actually, i got three more. And I've got other ideas for giveaways. I want to make it kind of like interactive. And I want to make it... Um, I want to make it interactive. And I want to make it like a challenge sometimes. You know what I mean? I don't want to have to try to pick someone all the time. Wayne, um, send me a message. Direct message me. Don't put your information in the feed. Put it somewhere. I know you can email me or you can message me somehow. I think if you go across... Not on the live feed, but on one, somewhere on my channel. Email me your information I was up I was scrolled up like too far guys I probably missed so much of this so Wayne you were the winner Texas Blue Rocks tune in next I'm trying to make this like every oh, today's Thursday that's how about Wednesday how about next Wednesday I'll give you guys the opportunity I'll give you a heads up since you've tuned in now you will be the first to know that I'm going to give the next giveaway on Wednesday about the same time, about 9.30. I'm going to start a live stream. I'm going to give it 10 minutes. I'm going to let people come in for 10 minutes. And then at that 10-minute marker, I'm giving it away. So I got three more to go. Thursday? Now, nah, man, I'm still getting used to that spark. There's another, I mean, there's a lot about that spark I still don't know yet. I've been playing with it over the last couple of days. And guys have been asking me about like um, what I think about it compared to the. Hmm. Guys are asking me about how about it compared to the Mavic, and I'm actually trying to do. I don't want to compare it to the Mavic because it's not an apples to apples, but I'm actually trying to do a comparison of the experience you get from going from Android to iPhone. There are so many differences when I go from my Android to my iPhone. When it, when I go into that software, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy how they're not like identical. Wednesday. Wednesday, Dawson, Wednesday, not Thursday, Wednesday, and we'll do it Wednesday. Um, can I have a sticker or something, t-shirt maybe? Ninth degree, I'm trying to figure out how to get t-shirts made. I want to actually, I mean, I'm not trying to be vain. I want to actually advertise for myself. So if any of you guys have a t-shirt business that can make me a few t-shirts, like five of them so I can wear them around, uh, kind of like pu publicize my own vlog, let me know. By the way, from Leechy Tips, just tried the first flight FPV today. Did you get it? How was your flight, Lewis? Did it work? Um, do they use the same remote? They do not use the same remote, John Wesley. They have two different remotes. Um, I don't have the Spark with me. I mean, I don't have the Spark remote with me, but the Mavic remote has this, like, you know, digital screen. It's got a, a full-size USB here. It's got another plug on the side here for the for the plugging directly into your phone. And you, I've tried. You cannot sync. You cannot sync your Spark to the Mavic remote, which would have been awesome. If anybody's got knows anybody or anybody online right now makes t-shirts, hit me up um, in my messenger. I need about five t-shirts made, and I want to get some like stickers made so I can stick them all around town and shit like that, so I can kind of advertise my vlog. Um, and then when I go to fun flies, I can give them to guys. I want to stick them on my cameras and shit so guys can kind of tune into the videos that I've filmed. You guys are going too fast. Mavic is OcuSync, much, much, much better range. Yep. I need. I got, I got a question to ask you guys. So I know I'm bouncing around because just kind of scrolling too much. I'm thinking about doing uh, antenna mod on the, um, the DJI Spark. And I want to know if, if you guys think that it's a good idea or not because... I thought about it. I was out today filming with, with the Spark, and, and I got... Hold on. Give me a second. <clears throat> All right. I'm back. <clears throat> so, for those guys that are still online, if you ever saw, I did a, my, one of my very first drone videos is about um, how to get more range and the comparison of your DJI uh, Phantom 3 versus like the Advance that I bought. 
Yeah, but I ain't using that. I'm not using Gareth. I'm not using that expensive $100 one. I went online and I bought a couple of these. Um, I think these were like seven, eight dollars a piece. They are 10 dB directional flat panel antennas, and I want to man mount them to the to the spark. So it looks kind of like it's kind of big if I mount them like this. But I figure if I do it, I'm gonna go for range when I'm using the control. So this would be the way to go. But then I thought about like when I'm doing, since these are directional antennas and they work best if your your drone is in front of you. Um, I got one of those. I got the reflective thing too. And that's why I was thinking. I got the reflective thing and I got this. Um, so I figured when you're doing stuff that's like kind of behind you, like a follow or something, I don't know if I'm going to get any drop in signal. What don't work at all? Mike Gress, what don't work? Oh, the reflective solar salt? Shame. They're so big. Yeah, they're, they're kind of big. Um, and I don't know if that's all antenna in there. I went over that DBS mod is like a hundred bucks though. This modification, these antennas cost uh, $25 and then this little pigtail, a couple dollars. So my next video was going to be about modding the antenna. So I don't know if you guys, any of you guys have done it. I know there's a lot of um, antenna mod out there for the, for the uh, Mavic Pro right now. And the Mavic Pro gets like ridiculous range. So I don't even know if I want to mess with it. Plus it broadcasts on OcuSync and I don't want to mess up that. There's a video where a guy put the... Um, the reflectives on the Mavic Pro and it actually um, lost a signal. It lost some of its signal it, it, because of the reflective antennas on it. I got really far. What, what do you, I'm sorry, Dawson. I got to scroll up to see what you're talking about. You said you got really damn far, so I'm trying to figure out what you what you did. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought, I, um, Mike. Mike, uh, Bab, Bab said, hold on, I can't, I'm killing your name, B Sabe, B Sabe, that's what I thought, just keep it short, but I thought, you know, even if I don't go longer distances, I will get better connectivity with the, um, with the, with the big antennas, B Sabe, got you, thank you, Mike B Sabe, sorry about killing your name. So Garrett 5000, I'm looking, I'm, and I'm, I don't know if I can find any um, helical antennas. Penetration is best with helicals, but I don't know if I can find any that are um, 2.4, 5.8. It seems like I, I, I can pick one, and I think 2.4 is probably going to be the one I have to pick because it's uh, for range and not for um, distance. I mean, because it's for distance and not, I don't know. I'm babbling, but you get it, I hope. I got nine guys in here now, so a lot of people kind of, oh yeah, I, I had the, uh, I had the reflective ones, and, uh, and I did get more range off of it. I honestly don't even want to get super duper range with the Spark, I just wanted to get a better transmission signal, um, and I don't know if it's worth it to break this thing open. Um, if I break it, it's like 150 bucks about another one. I have not tried FPV with the Spark. I actually reached out to, um, I reached out to Leechy today and asked them when they were going to have an update for the Spark and I didn't get a reply. I told them, you know, hey, you might want to kind of like, um, do an update because a lot of guys are looking to do FPV with the Spark. No reply. So if they reply to me, I'll, I'll, be, I'll give you guys an update on what they say. You know what? I just realized something. The Spark um, communicates uh, 5.8, 2.4. I can do FPV with, um, I don't need lychee. I can do it with my regular FPV goggles. It should just, I could probably should pick up that, I can pick up that signal. Tech in the bathroom. I haven't touched my Cody in months, man. It's probably all out of date. I got to get back on Cody too. All right, text Blue Rocks. I'll see you next week. If not, um, thanks for watching, dude. Appreciate it. Two point eight is further than five point six. 
2.8 is further than 5.6. I'm assuming you mean the frequency bands, Dawson. I'm yelling. I don't even know why I'm yelling. I'm yelling like I'm oh, yelling across the country to you guys. It's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, Mike, I, I saw a video where a guy actually did a, a, a test. He put the reflectors on the Mavic, and it actually lost range. It didn't gain any more range. It actually hurt the range. I don't know why. Maybe there's something about those antennas and that reflective thing. Oh, one-foot-long centipede. You got a picture of it? <laughs> a one-foot-long centipede? I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm not even moving. I'm moving out of freaking Dominican Republic one for a one foot long centipede. A centipede one foot long? You. Not me, brother. Yeah, Mike. Um, so I'm not interested in doing any kind of modifications to the Mavic because it, it just seems like it works as it is. Um, the spark on a different, on a, uh, I don't know what that was. I got a red band here. The spark is a little bit different though. It's it's uh, just a regular, I guess, regular communication. It's kind of short when you compare it to all the other drones I've had. The Mavic is perfect. I 100% agree. I don't want to move it. I don't want to. I don't want to do anything to it. I don't want to put any freaking stickers on it. I don't want to damage it. I've done no modifications to it. Mavic 2. Why well, I was talking about the Mavic 2. I'm hope I don't know. I wonder when, I wonder when it's gonna come out. Hey guys, I know I got four people online. Anybody on here an engineer? Anybody on here know how to use a 3D printer? I want to know how I can make a, a gimbal lock for this thing. I mean it, it's pretty solid. It doesn't bounce around a lot. I mean it's it's on there pretty good and it only moves this direction and this direction, but I want to kinda protect it so I don't bang it up when I put it in the bag. Mitch Wolf Instagram a picture of the antenna. Face 3D with the sensor. I'm missing so much stuff. Check think think averse. Check Thinkiverse. What's that? They got it all. Thinkiverse got all the accessories for the uh, Spark or how to print stuff. Let me look it up. Thinkiverse. How do you spell that? Thinkiverse. Think Everse. Looking it up now. Oh, 3D print community. Got it. Thinkverse. Got it. Um, I'll check it out. I'm thinking about one of those little... Um, oh, Thingverse. Thingverse? Does it say Thingverse? Oh, Thingverse. Got it. Got it. Looked it up. I think I'll get one of those little tabletop jobs. All right, Juan, I'll talk to you later, bro. Is it hard to do 3D printing? I, I know it's built into, like, I think 3D printing is built into Windows now. At least 3D. Yeah, I found it. I found it, uh, Lewis. I know 3D printing is built into like Windows 10 these days. I got four people left. M3D, let me go there too. I'll open that up right now so I don't forget. M3D, I don't know. Got it, M3D. Loom Cube. I have no idea what a Loom Cube is. I gotta look that up now. Is that something cool?
I think you guys are. Oh, LED light. Let me look that up. Loom cube. Oh, it's like a flashlight thing. I've seen those before. I've seen them for something. Do they work good? I mean, what do you use them for? I got an email to Mike Gross. Says email me at Lizard King. Oh, okay. Show you what it looks like. It looks like a a block with a with a LED in the middle of it. It looks like a it looks like a um a GoPro Hero session instead of having a camera in the middle of it. It's got a like a LED in the middle of it. It's a flashlight looking thing. Well, it's a headlight looking thing, I guess. I don't know if you can see this. Let me see. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that. It's a loom cube. Get the spark from Helly Direct. I was out testing it today. I think, you know what I need, guys? And I don't know if you got, I, I'm, that's why I'm also hoping Leachy comes up with a spark, a freaking spark um, update. I keep forgetting to hit the record button. And I'm so, I'm concentrating so hard on the freaking, what I'm trying to film, I keep forgetting to look up to see if the red lights are on to tell me that I'm not recording. And I keep freaking losing all my video. I was out for like an hour today flying around. I think I maybe lost half the video because when I landed, turned the record off and forgot to turn it back on. But Leechy, these guys should be paying me, man. Leechy has um, an auto record feature. So when you take off the thing, it just automatically starts recording. I don't know why a camera drone wouldn't have that. A piece of tape on my finger? What's that for? To hold down the record button? Oh, piece of tape to remember hit record. I, then I'll be like, hey, why did I put this piece of tape on my finger? I forget that too. <laughs> you know what? DJI is trying to control their product. They don't want you to modify it. They don't want you to do anything to it. Even though they allow other people to do it, they want you to run it the way they want to run it so they can keep control of you. That's why I keep adding in, man, the other day I tried to fire, I was, I don't even know where there, there might have been an airport, but it kept telling me that there was a, a dirt airport somewhere and the freaking geo system kept kicking in and it only allowed me to fly like 130, like 130 something feet before it told me I couldn't go any further. And I was like looking at the map, I'm like, there is no airport around here. The only thing that was around was the flying field that I was on. The RC flying field may have been considered an airport or a runway, but I could not get that thing to fly anywhere. I wouldn't doubt it, man. Um, so a class D is when you're like very close to an airport. I think a class B might be even closer to an airport. I, I can't remember which one it is. Like if you go into the um mapping system, somewhere on the uh somewhere on that when you look at that little geolocation thing, it'll it'll explain what each class is. And I think class D is like I live within, technically, I live within five miles of an airport. No matter where I drive, I am always in the shadow of this airport, in Newcastle Airport. It stretches over to Jersey. It stretches almost to Newark. It stretches all the way to Wilmington. And I'm in that circle of five miles. So it says you're in a Class D flight zone. Be careful when you fly. I think when you start getting into Bs and Cs and As, you're going to be shut the hell down.
Cause I get in, tr I got a class D and a class B. I can get in trouble for flying there. I will stop it, or it will stop. So from what I understand, because a friend of mine lives like probably in a class B, class C area, he lives like like spitting distance from the um, airport. If you get within um, like a class B or class C or one of the closer ranges, it won't even let you take off. It won't let him take his drone like more than I don't know twenty feet off the ground. It won't let him fly anywhere. So I think as long as you like are in a class D or something, you can still fly. You just gotta be. It says be cautious. But um, I don't know what the hell I was on the other day. It was like you were in a near an unpaved air airfield or something. What the hell is that thing called? An unpaved runway, and it locked me down. I thought I saw something from Lewis. People who break the drone rules. Yep, people who break the drone rules are going to ruin it for the community. Unfortunately, some guys, even in the RC air aircraft community, do the same thing. When I, I don't know if I mentioned this in my last video. Some of the pros would take a remote control helicopter, clear up to the clouds to do an auto rotation, and the AMA has to fight those battles with the FAA all the time because of the dangers of that other guys are subjecting commercial aircrafts to. So in my area, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm within, I got to always drive around. I got to like literally pull out my map and look for the freaking thing furthest away from that airport so that I don't get in any trouble. And um, <clears throat> I got a, an air map. Like if you guys don't know, you can go online and download like air map or... There's another. There's a couple um, drone. Um, there's a couple of drone applications that'll tell you where you are and what airports are around you. Sometimes you open that thing up and and every everything is lit up on it. There's like all these little circles showing you what's around. There's helipads. There's airports. There's runways. There's everything, and you you're looking for all these little spaces in between them to go fly. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, I don't know, Dawson, I don't know what a, a drone could do to it. Um, I work for an aviation company, and when they test it, like, when they test the engines to see how, um, how easy it would be to destroy it, they throw frozen turkeys into it to see what it can do, and it chops them up, spits them out the back. There may, I mean, you, I don't know if this drone, I don't know if this drone is as, destructive as a goose or something getting sucked up into a an airplane engine but yeah if it, if a, and actually especially if it hits the windshield and cracks it yep i i go on with you there that's why they put those hawks out on the um on the field to chase away pigeons i guess Lithium ion virus can explode in the engine. Yeah, I guess that's a good argument. That was my next, uh, that was my next, uh, let's see. They aren't governed by the part one on one hobbyist rules. I want to get my 107. I want to do aerial, I want to do um, real estate. Couple guys have been telling me how how kind of difficult it can be to get your 107, and they don't. I don't think they said it was that difficult. They said if you ain't ready for it, don't go ahead and take the test because um, it costs like 150 to 150 dollars every time you take the test. So I used to, John. I used to fly helicopters. I've been trying to get back into it, and um, I don't have the motor skills anymore to keep keep up with all of the crazy maneuvers that these guys do. So now I just fly regular circuits like an airplane. I'm obviously flying an airplane. I rarely flip it anymore. I crashed so many helicopters in my day and spent so much money repairing them. If I did the math on it right now, I I probably would be, be probably would be sick. A pair of seven tens for a freaking ninety seven helicopter started at a hundred hundred ten hundred fifteen dollars and it goes up. 
drones are ruling the air. They're getting too much attention, man. They're getting too much attention. And guys doing stupid stuff with it. Like I said, I don't know if my last video, um, somebody flew a drone. D.C., like the area of Washington, D.C., is a total no-fly zone. And somebody had to fuck it up for every. Oh, sorry. And somebody had to mess it up for everybody and fly a drone into the White House lawn. Somebody had to do something stupid. So now they got a bad rap. And then, you know, the guy's posting videos of it at 35,000 feet. Yeah, I'm going to mess up everybody. Lewis, where you at? What country? Five incidents in a month? Lewis, what country do you live in? Luis. Yeah, Casey got in crazy trouble. 35,000 feet. They can go... Uh, yeah, they can. So, I don't know about 35,000 feet. I know they get up there. So, they're probably like more like 13,000 feet. But, Casey... Here's the thing about Casey Neistat. I like the guy. But I knew he was going to get us in trouble with drones because of this, his popularity. He has millions of followers. And if you don't follow Casey Neistat, Casey Neistat has millions of followers. And this is, this is how much, this is how influential someone with millions of followers is. Casey Neistat, in one of his videos, asked people to send $1 to Marlon, the UPS guy's fund for his mother. I can't remember who it was. They will have some medical issues. He asked them to send $1 to this guy's fund for that medical issues. And over a million dollars later, he had to say, guys, stop sending money. So here's what Casey would do, and I knew he was going to get us in trouble. Casey would do something like stick a drone out of a window on a spatula and then fly it around where you have no idea of where it's going. And then you know some guy's going to try to copy him, or he would go right out in the middle of Midtown and launch a drone, and the thing would go fly away and hit somebody. And... <laughs> Yeah, he's. A, I mean, he he knows how to fly. He could never. I mean, I saw him try to land. He 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 bounced his um when the uh, GoPro thing came out, whatever that GoPro drone is called. Um, I can't remember what the GoPro drone is called. He bounced it off the ground because he can't land. And then on one of his videos, like his drone flew away, and he was like, "Hey, if anybody finds this drone, can you bring it back to me, Karma?" Yeah, that's what it is. He's like, "Bring it back to me." And then they're like. They bring it back all crashed up. You don't know who that thing could have hit. And I'm like, Casey's going to get everybody in trouble for one, or he's going to get himself in trouble for two. And and it's because it's so popular. So I don't know how it turned out. I know he did admit at the Spark, right after the Spark um, release, he was like, I can't fly in, in Manhattan anymore because I'm under investigation by the FAA. And they told me if I do it, I'm going to be in trouble. But he kind of brought that on himself, man. Even me, even me, when I'm doing all these videos, you can't record yourself committing a crime and expect to say you didn't do it, right? So when I'm filming these videos, I'm like, oh, man, I got this FPV set up. I don't have a spotter. And even though I'm not going to fly it far, the rules say I can't fly without I can't without letting it leave my line of sight. And I'm like, damn, I cannot fit, shoot this fuck. I can't shoot this video. I can't shoot it. And it's just a pain in my butt. Yeah, but you know what? That's another thing. You can walk right in the Best Buy and say, hey, I want the biggest the biggest drone you got, and they'll let you walk out the door with it. And you'll start it up and fly through somebody's window. Osbeach Andy. Osbeach Andy, how you doing? Australia, how's it going over there? Does that affect FPV racing? But drone laws?
Psycho Gamer, I'm probably gonna sell my Mavic. You wanna buy a Mavic? I might make a deal for it. I got a Mavic. I got a Mavic Pro. I got two cases. I got three batteries. I got a crap ton of accessories that I bought for it to do demos like landing feet and propeller guards. And I think I'm gonna buy a Phantom 4 Pro. How much? I think I won't get asked for a thousand dollars for it. No, I'm I'm willing to, I'm willing for my fans to go nine fifty ish, like a thousand. And the only reason I'm gonna go a thousand is because my buddy's got a P4 Pro with two batteries and a whole bunch of crap that he don't want because he bought a Mavic because I wouldn't trade him mine. I wouldn't trade him my Mavic for his P4 Pro. He went out and bought a Mavic, and now I want a P4 Pro and got to sell my Mavic. I should have took advantage of it when I had the opportunity. But he said he'll give it to me for $1,000. So, I got this little guy now. I'm going to use a little guy for traveling. And I'm going to use the P4 Pro for probably some business ventures down the line. And not to say that I couldn't shoot great quality videos with this guy. Um, I just, because I'm doing like, um, video with it, like for, if I'm doing like real estate, I want the four way obstacle avoidance. That's the only reason I want to get rid of the Mavic because when you're flying backward or today I was trying to do a reveal shot of this, uh, historical house in this park and I forgot to look back and that freaking thing was about to run into a tree. Not this one, the other one. I was about to run the spark into a tree. I forgot to look back on the freaking reveal shot behind me. So Four-way obstacle avoidance for real estate, knowing that I'm going to be flying around stuff and trying to back around stuff seems like a better deal than the uh, Mavic when it comes to, you know, security. So, yeah, I think even though I love it, I love it. I just, I haven't even touched it since I've gotten the Spark. I haven't even flown it in, like, months. The batteries are probably halfway drained because of the automatic battery draining feature or whatever. Um... And before I got the freaking spark, I was I was in love with that thing. Lewis, you got a channel? I'm, you got a channel with your um, with your Portugal videos up? I'll go check them out. I'm hoping it does because if it does come out with uh, obstacle avoidance all around, I will grab one as soon, as quick as I bought any of these other drones. I need that four-way obstacle avoidance. In Joe Max, the flat, the spark is. It's one of the scariest drones to fly, and that's why I like these long range tests. I don't know how these guys are doing it. Here's the deal with the Spark. The battery is supposed to last for 16 minutes. Realistically, it might last for about 14 because you're hovering instead of flying forward most of the time. So then what happens is, as soon as it goes into battery return to home, within like a minute and 30 seconds, it goes into critical battery return to home, which locks out all of your return to home feature so you can't cancel a landing or cancel the return to home and if you're flying over water your heart will be jumping out of your chest hoping that, that thing makes it back to you and if there's a headwind forget about it i was flying this today a headwind makes this thing like feel like a it already kind of flies slow um but when there's a headwind it creeps back i'm like man is this thing flying on low power it's crazy slow but um, if you put it in sport mode, that fuck, damn, I keep cursing. Sorry, I'm sorry for those who are offended by my cursing. When you put it in sport mode, that thing is a rocket. But the only thing about it, I think it loses altitude. I was flying that freaking thing like sport mode, and before I knew it, I was seeing the ground coming into the frame. It pitches forward like this, and it moves, but I think you got to get it up high or it's just going to crash into the ground. I think it loses altitude in uh, full forward flight mode uh, in sport mode, full forward in, in sport mode. Pitches like this. Freaking pitches like this. And the next thing you know, you'll see the ground coming up in the shot. That's 
why I was, I was like, I, the, the thing is, the, so for you guys who are thinking about buying these, this, I've, I've flown this in sport mode, and I've flown this in sport mode. It's spark is a portable selfie stick. It is, I ain't gonna lie, but you can do more with it. This thing is fun to fly in sport mode because it is fast. The only thing I'm worried about is hitting something and breaking this gimbal off the front. So I'm trying to get ahead of some of the other guys who are coming up with accessories and making like a protective gimbal guard for this thing. Because in sport mode, you don't have the front obstacle avoidance and I need to just protect the gimbal. So if I can protect the gimbal, this thing will be cool as hell to fly around and crashing it. This is, this is like solid. I don't, this almost feels like metal. Um, I don't know if it'll damage it, but I think it'll take a, a crash better than this would in sport mode for sure. So I'm trying to figure out how I can create a gimbal guard for this and a protective cover for the front end. So if you just want to fly it around in sport mode to get some fun with it, this is the drone to get. Pop the gimbal off, fly it around, get some selfies with it. Put the gimbal, I mean, put the card back on and... That's what I'm trying to do, but I don't know anything about 3D printing. I need to figure out how to make a gimbal guard for it. Same here, Dawson. I got a I got a racing drone. I flew it like four times, trying to figure out how to see what was in front of me when the thing is pitched forward like this. Then the guy told me to point the camera up so that it flies level, and I've been doing that trying to fly it around, but somehow, some way, like I lose it. Not lose it, but trying to get it back and land it. Um, the drone race guys are just flying them around in circles and letting them drop out of the ground, out of the sky. I don't know if that's the correct way to do it without breaking up your freaking drone. Lewis, I might be able to try to figure that out. I was trying to get somebody to at work to um to somehow create a CAD drawing of the spark and then make it on my 3D printer so I had something as a mold to make uh gimbal guards. I got a lot of very, very talented engineers that I work with that can do amazing stuff and we got a room full of 3D printers that they can make anything with. Mike, if you do, hit me up. If you're not, I know, I think I'm following you because I remember your little bubble there. I think I'm following you. I'll check tomorrow. I'm gonna go to work. I've been on freaking training for two days. When I get back to work tomorrow, I'm gonna find some engineers to see if they can uh, 3D mock up that thing for me. We got this thing. I don't know if you do it. You just put it in there and lasers go and freaking. Pretty much just build CAD files by you know automated. I, you put in this laser thing and it just laser shines a laser all over it, and then next thing you know you got a 3D CAD model. Tennis balls, half a tennis ball. That sounds like a good idea, Juan, but I think it's the weight that I will have to worry about. Yeah, I'll give you the measurements. I don't have a ruler right now, Lewis. Shoot me a message, and then I'll uh, I'll be able to email them to you, or somehow send them back to you through the uh, YouTube or or some kind of email service. Dawson, your own racing is is fast paced, man. I went out and watched those guys fly. I don't know how they do some of the maneuvers they do. Um, in my drone video, when I went to the drone races, that guy went missed the gate and went like this, and went back to the gate. I'm like, how did you do that in like a half a second? All while looking through a pair of 3D, go I mean, uh, FPV goggles, motor skills. I've been off the, I've been off the sim for like ever. I haven't even freaking, I haven't even been practicing the fly the helicopter. I have. I thought I would get back out there and learn it the hard way by just flying it around. I need to get back on the sim and get my uh, skills back. Yeah, Dawson, the, the goggles make it harder like to, to fly and not hit the ground. And then when I don't have the goggles on, I'm trying to fly line of sight. The thing, my drone is square, so I'm like, which direction is it facing? 
I can't even tell half the time. Nah, there's a Muscle Beach drone video. So also another thing, if you are into racing drones, I want to build one of those little, little brushless guys, and I need some help on what to buy. There's so many options out there. I want to buy one of those little brushless jobs that are about the size of, of one of these. I don't think mine's a 250. I don't know what mine even is. It's like a 175 or something. I think they're measured by millimeters or something. I don't know what it is though. Well guys, we're coming up on 55 minutes. I gotta get ready for work tomorrow. I gotta get my butt in at 6 a.m. I appreciate everyone who tuned in today. Congratulations to the winner. Remember, I got three more of these to give away. I'm gonna do them every Wednesday and then um, for the next three weeks. And then I'm thinking about doing like gift cards or something. Um, I saw a guy do like a video where he gave away gift cards and uh, I don't have to ship anything. I can just give you the number. Um, one said PayPal gift cards. I never knew that they made PayPal gift cards, but I can definitely do Amazon gift cards. Um, but stay tuned. Again, thanks for everybody's support. Um, I know there's only seven of us left, eight of us left, but um, all of you guys that are following me, I have followed every last one of you back, so I'm anxious to see any videos that you put up. Um, and uh, Joe Max, I don't know if I've got you, but it uh, looks like you got... A new sub there so i'll sub you back thank you mike um and again guys let's uh support each other as a community and hopefully we can all you know get together one day online and do one of those big old i don't know how they do it and if, again you guys need to let me know some of this stuff like how you do those four screen chat things that they do on some of those things i need to do all that i need to get a webcam i guess but um Again, thanks for all the support, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I know this is only a small token of my appreciation, but um, I think I'm going to start clearing out some of my toys. So uh, I got three of these. I got this little micro helicopter thing that I don't fly anymore, and I got a closet full of test drones that I bought when I was doing little cheap and expensive drone reviews. So I will keep giving you guys stuff if you want it. If not, I will let my son bust it up or something. So I will... See you guys later. Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you later.